What's going on everybody? I hope everybody's doing well today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and I help people achieve their financial goals in today's economy. I wanted to bring something new to you guys today and if you've been with me for a while, you know I have a book out called The Wealth Journey and I figured it would be a perfect name for me to have a series called Wealth Journey Series where I show you how my literal financial situation is going what I'm investing in, what my net worth is, and all that stuff. And I just want to update you all on what that looks like for me. It's one thing to hear the financial insight from me and the advice and all that good stuff, but it's another thing for you to really see how I'm living, how my money flows from month to month, and just what my priorities are. So you can kind of see, for one, I'm not just up here talking and just saying whatever's you know on my mind that day. I'm actually talking from experience, but it can also give you a interesting, unique perspective. So I figured I have 200 and something videos up on YouTube right now. So I'm gonna have this new series within my normal videos that go on. So if you look up and see Wealth Journey series in my titles every now and then, just know that it's purely about me and my own personal financial journey. And that could consist of, you know, updates like net worth updates, spending, saving, investing, and a bunch of other things, milestones, setbacks, you know, things that are gonna give you a more transparent look into my personal finances. I'm personally excited about it. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. But anyways, enough of me rambling on. We're gonna jump straight into my laptop right now and you're gonna have a look at my first thing that I wanna show you in this video and that is my total net worth. All right, so as we can see here, we're in my laptop. So just a little background on this. For the month of December, earlier in January, I made a video about having six figures saved up and I got that number from right here but that was not my net worth at the time because net worth is gonna be your assets minus your liabilities. And I do have student loans that I'm taking my sweet time on paying off, which I'll be discussing throughout the year and also throughout this video. But anyway, when we look at this, that's where I was at at the end of December. So I take this, I take these numbers down at the end of every month. I did miss out on January and, um, yeah, I just kind of wrote that one off. That's what that yellow means. It means, Reggie, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So, oh well, pretty much is what it means. But it's all good because my net worth has gone up quite a bit from December through February. And so at the end of February, my total net worth ended up being $108,284. So super exciting. As you can see down here, my goal for the year is $130,000. But I'm starting to think that might be a little too low. I think I'm going to be able to blow that out of the water and I might just make that 200,000. I'll be sharing that with you in future videos, how I decide to go about that. But just so you can see how it's broken down, I have my cash split up in three ways. So I have checking, savings, emergency fund. And just so you know, I don't let this much money sit in my checking account. This is taken purposely at the end of each month because at the beginning of the next month, that's when the heavy bills start. And also, I like to keep a little extra in my checking account at the end of the month just so when the next month starts, I know exactly how much I'm gonna put extra into savings or an emergency fund or a Roth IRA or even into my individual investing account. But I think this right here, and by the way, you can app, you can get access to this exact tracker if you want it for yourself. Just click the link down in the description and it'll be all yours. Because it doesn't just go for one year, it goes all the way down. So like this is for every single year, 2025, 2026, and so forth and so on. That's 10 years right there. And whatever year you type right here, it's going to add a year to the next one so you don't have to worry about it just saying whatever that year is. So just so you know my saving strategy, every month I put at least $500 into my emergency fund. Sometimes I do more, but typically the minimum I put in there is going to be $500 for savings. I'm pretty comfortable with where it's at, but uh, I was thinking about it and I, I just figured I'd be more comfortable if it was $2,000 all the time. I am one of those people who's guilty of taking money out of my savings account sometimes, but I've gotten a lot better with that. And part of what made me better with that is keeping a buffer of what makes me feel comfortable in my checking accounts. So I know when the time of the month comes when my bills are gonna be at their heaviest, which is typically the beginning of the month for me, I know I have to have an extra, we'll say $800 from the end of the previous month for me to not pull anything from my savings. Even though 
I completely know what my plan is for myself and for my financial journey. I get a little nervous when my bank account gets a little low. Even though I calculate it down to a T, down to the exact number and decimal point it's going to be, it, it just doesn't feel good for me. So I have had a habit of pulling from my savings account, but I don't typically do it too much. So the way this works is I have an automated amount of money coming out of my checking account and it goes into my savings account. Typically a $750. But as I was just saying, I tend to put more in there as the month goes on as my buffer builds. So pretty much between $750 and $1,000, it'll go to my savings. And then from there, an automated 500 comes out of my savings and into my emergency fund. And that works pretty well for me. And these two, I have two 401ks, one's with Vanguard, one's with Fidelity. I don't really worry about these too much, but I do have 8% of my income going into the Fidelity one. Uh, I'm not touching the Vanguard one. I'm just letting it grow and it, it grows considerably every single year. So I'm just not going to touch it. I'm just going to let it continue to grow. But that is where a majority of my net worth is in, is my 401k. That's why I stress so much on this channel, invest in your 401k. Talk to your HR office about the 401k and what that really means. And, and do your own research as well. See what different packages is offered. And then also see if your company matches you. My company matches when you contribute 8% of your income. And they match 50 cents for every dollar you put in. So it adds up pretty quick. I've only been with my current company for five years and some change. And it's already at 71000 so it builds up pretty darn quick. And I didn't even have to max it out. Roth IRA, this is something that I have 100% committed to taking more seriously this year. I, I realize there are limits with the Roth IRA when it comes to how much money you can put in the Roth IRA based on your incomes. So for example, if you're single, when it comes to your taxes, and by single, I just mean not married. If you make less than 153000 a year, then sure, you can continue to give that $7,000 per year. But my income has been increasing a decent amount every single year, so I think at some point, I'm not gonna be able to contribute as much as I'm able to now, so I'm putting as much as I possibly can in now. It's something that I kind of, it's one of my financial regrets, actually. It's something that I wish I would have taken a lot more seriously early on. Because if I'd been filling this up since I was like 21, even if I didn't max it out, it would be a lot more than it is right now. But you live and you learn. It's all good. I just want to share my perspective with you real quick. But anyways, my favorite account ever. I'm, I'm a sucker for individual stocks. This is my individual stock account. As we can see from December, which was when it was $21,523, now it's $25,342. This is as of the end of February. Obviously, the numbers fluctuate every day, but it went up a lot. And between this time, I didn't add anything to it. My stocks have just been going crazy. I'm up 80-something percent, and my account is looking amazing right now. Not to say it will always look like that, but I'm very happy with uh, my choices right now. I didn't include this in December, but I've, I completely forgot that I do have some crypto. I have a very small amount of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, and uh, it's been going up and I haven't realized it. This is literally like 200, a $200 investment that I made like back in 2022. It's worth $582 right now. So I'm just going to keep it in there and see if it grows. This is something I completely forgot about. So it's pretty nice to know that you have an extra almost $600 just sitting. And then of course, life insurance, $1,678. So all I'm looking for on a month to month basis is just an increase on all of these. And it's been doing good. So I'm at, when it comes to total savings and investments, 132669 And then we subtract that from student loans. Student loans, I actually forgot to write these things down but this is student loans this is medical bills and this is credit cards so student loans have gone down quite a bit which is pretty good again i'm taking my sweet time with this because as you can see my investments has severely gone well over the amount of how much i owe so it's building my net worth whereas if i just paid this off it wouldn't have quite the impact that investing would on my net worth, if that makes sense. Medical bills, I did go to the dentist, you know what I'm saying, I did go to the doctor. Just routine checkups and things, but that's how much I owe, I'm gonna be paying that this month. And then credit card, I ate out a few times and I have one of those Chase Sapphire credit cards that gives you points for things like going out to eat. So I strategically used it for that so I can build up some points on my credit card and buy something else in a later date. 
for free pretty much. <clears throat> so anyway, my total net worth is $108,284. Very, very proud of that. I think that is a big milestone to be at or above $100,000. And um, right now I'm 28. So I have big goals and big plans for myself, but it's good to to see that kind of progress. Uh, before I created the spreadsheet, I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what my net worth was. I would have had a decent guess, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you an exact number. And I definitely don't think I would have known that it was over six figures. So anyway, we're gonna jump into how I actually manage my money. And with that is just budget planning. I've shown this to you before and you do have access to this. Uh, just click the link in the description. This is the one that is for free. But at the beginning of every year, and I did this toward the end of last year, uh, I just pre-planned everything. If you do notice, I will have my income stuff up here kind of blurred out just for privacy reasons. Because one thing I don't want to do is put my business out there as far as how much I make at work. That's just something I'm not comfortable with. But I will 100% let you know how much I make on my YouTube channel or through my books and all that stuff. So this will be blurred out. But basically... I just put how much I think every bill is going to cost me, and I just pretty much keep them constant. Uh, that includes groceries and gas and everything, how much I think I'm going to pay based off of my previous spending habits. Um, and sometimes I do adjust this for inflation, but we'll just see how things go this year. And I do this in the most pessimistic way. I do it as if I received the lowest amount possible when it comes to my salary and I'm doing this with the lowest amount that I think I'll get from my YouTube channel which tends to range from 100 to a thousand dollars really depends on how much I'm making that month and then of course my books my course and, and things like that but this is split up between income expenses and saving and that's just how much I plan for right now I'm, I'm mainly focused on building up my Roth IRA and my emergency fund um, but those priorities can change at any given time. And we'll jump more into that later. But anyway, the way I track how much I'm actually spending is I just put this in this little data sheet right here. And it's all my income, all my expenses, all my savings, all that good stuff. And then what it turns into is this very, very nice dashboard that I put together. Um, these are just extra bells and whistles that I've recently added as well as this down here, just so you can kind of get a visual of what I'm getting into. Again, this is going to be blurred out, but I will show you the total number, which is right here, $8,397 for last month. Um, I got more money than I expected last month from pretty much everything, side hustles, tax returns, and things like that. So it was definitely a good month, but I tried to keep my spending the same, if not lower than usual, because I take advantage of when I make more money than usual. Here's a little chart right here to show the relationship between my income, expenses, and savings. I'm trying to get the savings up to about right here, but it's gonna take a bit. Anyway, the reason these are up here is because these are what I've always felt would take the most amount from me and I've been very disciplined in this category dining which consists of restaurants and dates and then DoorDash which I've calculated down here for myself and it's going to turn red anytime I go over what that number is. So I've been I've been doing pretty good when it comes to that stuff. been cooking at home a lot more lately and my cooking has improved so I'm not mad at that one bit. Uh, and of course rent and utilities. I also keep these as a way to check myself in terms of are my expectations realistic when it comes to how much I'm budgeting for and how much I expect myself to spend. I just realized I made a mistake here, so I just took a little bit of time to, to fix that real quick. Uh, it was a formatting issue on my part. But anyway, I use this to check myself because I want to make sure that my expectations for myself are realistic. So I know between, for example, my rent and my utilities, it should not exceed $1,900. But if I saw that my rent went up more than I expected for it to, I would have to adjust that number to maybe 1950 or even 2000. But right now everything's in order. Last month was just a very good month. And I will also let you know, one of my biggest spending habits is groceries and DoorDash. And so from work, as part of my five year celebration and being there for five years, working hard and whatnot, I got some gift cards, which I use for my groceries. Also for like, going out to eat, dates, and things like that. So those areas, like here, are a lot lower than they usually are. But to be honest, I just like to eat, and that's where a lot of my money goes. So if I could just better control myself in those areas, I'd probably be able to invest and save uh, a lot more. 
anyways, fitness, I put a lot of money into fitness because I take fitness very seriously. When it comes to the gym, I love to lift weights. I like to run. I like to do things now for my cardio because now I'm doing Muay Thai and you got to be in shape to do that kind of stuff. Sparring and whatnot, hitting pads, hitting the bag and stuff. You have to be in, in pretty good shape. Otherwise, you'll just gas out. So I combine my recreational gym with my fighting gym and that's what this is. So as long as I don't go over $500, which I never do, I'm always good there. And then of course, wealth, I want it to at least be 1,000 of my dollars that I make every month to go towards my wealth. It doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes things do come up, but this was a good month. So I was able to save quite a bit. Uh, and 500 of this went into my Roth IRA. The other thousand went into my savings. So very, very good month. And this right here is another thing that I put in here is an extra touch. Just how much money do I keep? That's just calculating how much money I was able to save plus how much money was left over. But this is the real number that I want to pay attention to because a lot of times this is the type of money I would carry over into a different month and I would do so without realizing it. But this is straight up telling me, hey, you got 550 that you need to move over to either your savings or investment, something. But it can't just sit in here. Otherwise, you're going to just spend it on whatever. And sometimes I will give myself a pass to spend it on whatever. But most of the time, like 80% of the time, this is going into savings or investment. So this is the number that keeps me in check. And this is the number that just lets me know how intentional I've been about saving and spending correctly. <clears throat> if you want to understand how this number is calculated, because it does seem like a very uh, big number, it's just, it's nothing but my total income plus my total savings minus my total expenses for that month. And that's how I get I do want to say one more thing about my spending, saving, investing, and, and all that good stuff. My biggest spending comes from giving. And I didn't realize that until I started keeping up with all my spending, but that actually makes me feel really good that most of my spending every month, it's either number one or number two, it's giving. I think that's pretty cool. But also, I want to let y'all know, I just got a 5% raise at work. So even though I'm not going to share with you exactly how much I make from work, I am going to show you what I do with that extra 5%. And I'll give you a hint. It's not like typical of what people do when they get a raise of any kind. I'm going to pretend like the 5% doesn't exist in terms of my other spending power. It only exists in terms of saving and investing. That's how I plan to spend my 5%. But if I ever deviate from it, you will see it in real time and you will know exactly why. And if I decide to, I might use some of it to pay off debt a little quicker. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. And I'm going to be completely real with you right now. My screen capture on my computer just ran out of data. So that means I need to delete a bunch of stuff on my computer before I can start to record on my computer again. But that's okay. It's all good. I have a screenshot of what I'm about to talk to you next. It's the last thing I want to talk to you about before we close out this video. But just so you know, savings goals is another sheet that I have within my giant, as you saw, workbook on Excel. Click the link in the description. You can get access to this as well. But this, I know it only shows as one, but there's actually five of them total. So you can have a total of 25 savings goals. And as you can see, it takes a while to get a couple done, let alone five or 25. But anyway, I just want you to see that the only things I'm working on right now I'm not even trying to necessarily hit a certain number with my investments because I just know I already have a number predetermined to go into those every month. So I'm not really keeping up with that. I just know it keeps going up and my net worth keeps going up. But uh, I want to have a little more cash on hand. At once upon a time, I had $20,000 in my savings. I had another like $3,000 in another account. But I've dispersed my money across investments and uh, credit card debt and, and things like that just to Keep my priorities straight, you know. It doesn't make sense to have a ton of money in one place, but then you're lacking in other areas. So I just evenly disperse things as best as I could. But just so you know, and if I'm not making eye contact with you, it's just because I'm looking at my screen. But um, just so you know, like I said before, I want to have $2,000 minimum in my savings account. I'll just feel more comfortable that way. And this is the $2,000 that I don't plan on touching at all. Right now, I'm at $1,500. I just put... 
another 200 in my savings account. I know on the previous screen it showed like 1300 or whatever in my savings. Now it's 1500 And then for my emergency fund, there's 6201 in there. So that's going to continue to grow as well. Plus in a high yield savings account. So that's going to help out as well growing that. So I, I like visual representation. I'm just a visual learner. But as you can see on the screen right there for my savings account, I'm 75% of the way, which means 500 more dollars and I'm done there. Boom. I can get that done within another month or so. But I did put a due date for myself as May 1st. That's the absolute latest it needs to happen. It's going to happen way before then though. And then when it comes to my emergency fund, I expect it to be done by August 1st. So that's how I manage my money in the most pessimistic way possible because anything can happen if I'm expecting pretty much the worst I can't be caught off guard because that's what I'm prepared for so if I'm prepared for the worst at all times I'm going to pretty much be pleasantly surprised every single time and when I'm not pleasantly surprised it's like well I kind of prepared for this in the first place that's just how I think it's a torturous way of thinking but it is an effective way of thinking and for my emergency fund, I'm 62% of the way. I just like to have these little gauges just so I can know how far along am I? Because my bank accounts don't have the capability to say, this is how close you are to your savings goal. And just little things like that for me help out a lot. Yeah, anyway, I also have this set up to where it calculates at the top what my total savings is. And this is just for cash. So I like to have cash on hand and I know if, some, if an emergency happens, I have cash on hand. Uh, once I do hit these goals, I do plan on holding back on savings for quite a bit so I can put more energy and effort into investing and really maximize my net worth. And then at some other time, I'll start to prioritize savings again. But it just depends on what I have going on. But this is really just frontline defense for saving, which is just having emergencies and, and things like that. What can go wrong type of thing. Again, you have access to all three of these worksheets, workbooks, whatever you want to call them down in the description. Go ahead and click it and get yours um, and enjoy it. Anyway, I hope you like this video. This is just a, a new way of me doing things. Nothing has changed for the channel. I just want to install a few of these videos every month or so, maybe a couple times a month, just showing you where I'm at, how I'm investing, how I make my decisions and what is going on in life pretty much, just so you can kind of get to know me better as a person, not just as, an, a, as a financial educator, but also as a person who also has imperfections and who also has a financial journey of their own you can see it right here and i'll be completely transparent i'm not going to share every single thing with you at least not right now but you will get to have a look into what my world looks like but anyways that is the video for today thank you so much for watching my name is reggie bryant and i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you in the next one